First Corinthians 15, verse number 58. We're going to use the verse that is based upon your theme tonight. And all of you, I believe, have memorized this. If you have not memorized this, try to. Ito ang favorite verse ng aking tatay. Ano? Ang sabi rito, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be a steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Heavenly Father, once again, we come to you before your throne of grace, asking, Lord, that you would give us the understanding of your word, that you would anoint the lips of your servant, that you would give me, Lord, the physical strength to preach your word tonight. Thank you, Father God, so much for your love and goodness to us. In Christ we pray, and for your sake alone. Amen, and amen, and amen. You may be seated. There are 58 verses in this chapter. And there are a good number of subjects uh, that were taught by the Apostle Paul. Now we have to go through that because if you're going to look at the, at, at the last verse, verse 58, we find that verse 58 is the conclusion of that chapter. In fact, the conclusion of the whole book in reality. Okay? So kaya nga, pag atin tinagalog ito, ah, yung der, the word therefore ay matatawag natin kaya nga aking mga minamahal na mga kapatid. Therefore, my beloved brethren. Now, why is it that uh, this verse became the concluding verse in this chapter? If you would notice here, first of all, the Apostle Paul started in explaining to us what the gospel is. All right? Dito, nakikita nyo ang explanation ng tunay na gospel ng ating Panginoon kung saan, ang sabi po, ah, the Book of Romans, ito ang kapangyarihan ng Diyos sa kaligtasan. The gospel is the power of God unto salvation. The Apostle Paul here, you'd find out that he is explaining to us and he was saying uh, that uh, he is declaring to us the gospel. The gospel na ipinahayag niya sa inyo, na inyong tinanggap, na inyong tinayuan at pinanindigan. Okay? At kung saan kayo ay nangaligtas if you keep in memory what I preach unto you unless you have received in vain. Now, hindi nangangahulugan na ikaw na nangatiling ligtas if you keep in memory. Hindi yun ang ibig sabihin yan. Alright? Pero alam natin na tayong lahat ng mga ligtas meron tayong pag-alala sa ating kaligtasan. Ibig sabihin yan, there is always a time in which we came to know Christ. Now, you might not even memorize the date when you got saved. Baka hindi mo alam yung araw. Ako, hindi ko alam yung date ng aking pagkakaligtas. Hindi ko alam ang araw na ako inaligtas. Pero alam ko ako inaligtas. Alam ko isang araw sa aking buhay, tinanggap ko ang Panginoon sa aking puso. Hindi ko naintindihan ang lahat ng ibig sabihin ng gospel. Pero ito naintindihan ko that the Lord Jesus Christ died for my sins. That the Lord Jesus Christ shed His blood for me. That the Lord Jesus Christ rose again from the grave. And that one day, the Lord Jesus Christ will come. Yun po ang ibig sabihin ng gospel na sinabi dito sa verse number 3. Oo. For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received. Ano to? Ito yung gospel. That Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Now, although ang binabagit na scriptures dito, yung Old Testament, Old Testament makikita nyo, ha, na ipinapakita na ng Panginoong Kristo, doon sa Old Testament, ipinakita na 
na ang ating Panginoon darating. Sa Old Testament, ipinakita na na ating Panginoon ay mamamatay sa kus ng Kalbaryo, na siya ay ililibing, na siya ay mabubuhay na maguli in the Old Testament that is very clearly taught. Okay? At inuulit lamang ni Apostle Paul, siya bilang nakakaalam ng Old Testament sapagkat uh, yun ang binuhay ni Apostle Paul nung siya pa ay hindi pa nakakilala sa ating Panginoon. Yeah, you will, you'll be able to see here how the Apostle Paul started with telling us what the gospel is all about. What the gospel is all about. Now, if you came to know Christ for any other uh, reason except the gospel, that's not knowing Christ. Okay? Kung nakilala ang amo ang Panginoon sa pamagat ng relihiyon, that's not knowing Christ. Kung nakilala ang amo ang Panginoon sa pamagat ng tradisyon, that is not knowing Christ. Because the only way for you to know the Lord Jesus Christ is through the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? Very clear po yan. Kung saan sinabi ni Apostle Paul na akin itong ipinapahayag Oh, if you would uh, look here in verse number 9, and sabi niya, for I am the least of the apostles, that I am not fit. Yung po yung salitang fit dito. Ha? Oh, to be called an apostle. Why? Because I persecuted the church of God. But, and sabi niya, by the grace of God, I am what I am and His grace which was bestowed upon me was not in vain but I labored more abundantly than they all yet not I but the grace of God which was with me. Therefore, whether it were I or they, so we preach and so you believe. Kasi sinabi ni Apostle Paul, maaaring ako ay naglabor. Maaaring ako ay gumawa ng, ng napakarami kaysa sa ibang gumawa pero hindi ako yan. Yan ang grace ng Panginoon sa buhay ko. The Apostle Paul was the Apostle of Grace. Ay makikita nyo, beginning verse number 12, ah, ang pinag-usapan na rito yung resurrection. Oo. Bakit? Kasi ang mga Pharisees do not believe in the resurrection. So, makikita nyo rito, ah, sapagkat the part of the gospel is that Christ rose again from the grave. Kapag hindi kasama yung Christ rising from the grave, hindi kompleto ang gospel. The completeness of the gospel is the fact that the Lord Jesus Christ rose again from the grave. And that is the victory that God gave to us so that we could be able to live according to His will. We could be able to live in righteousness because the Lord Jesus Christ was raised up in the grave. We have the power to live for the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, Now, anong sabi ni Apostle Paul sa verse 14? And if Christ be not risen, then is our preaching vain, and your faith is also vain. Di walang kwenta ang gospel. Walang kwenta ang ating pananampalataya. At kapag hindi ang Panginoong Yesu Cristo ay nabuhay na maguli, ang sabi sa verse 15, tayo ay natagtag, natatagpuan ng mga false prophets and false witnesses. Oo, mga bulaang mga propeta. Oo, bakit? Sapagkat atin tinetestify, atin ipinapahayag na ang Panginoong Yesu Cristo ay nabuhay na muguli. Yung pala, hindi naman pala siya nabuhay na muguli. Now, here in verse 19, napangagad ng verse ito. If in this life only, We have hope in Christ. We are of all men most miserable. I would like you to take all of these verses and remember them bago tayo dumako doon sa therefore. Hindi ba? Na makikita nyo rito, the hope that we have in Christ, the hope that we have in Christ is what? It's based on the fact that Jesus was raised from the grave. Doon, nagihinge yung ating hope In Christ. Kaya nga ang sabi ni Apostle Paul dito, ha? ngayon, 
Kung sa buhay na, natin dito, ha, kung itong ating hope kay Kristo ay nandito lang sa buhay natin sa mundong ito, tayo na ang pinakamiserabling tao sa buong mundo. But no. We are not miserable. Why? Because our hope in the Lord Jesus Christ is not based upon what we think and what we know and what we do, but based upon on the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Ipiniliwanag dito ni Apostle Paul ang ibig sabihin ng gospel. Okay. Ngayon, makikita nyo rito, ha? kapag inyong itutuloy-tuloy ito, okay, sapagkat napakahaba ng uh, pagpapaliwanag ni Apostle Paul sa resurrection ng ating Panginoon. Makikita nyo sa verse number 51, yung mystery of the resurrection. Ang sabi sa verse 51, Behold, I show you a mystery. Ano yung mystery niya? Na hindi alam ng mga tao, walang pananapalataya. Ang sabi rito, the mystery is this, we shall not all sleep, hindi lahat tayo mamamatay, but we shall all be changed. That's the mystery. Oo. Yan ay binabanggit ni Apostle Paul sa ating panahon. Sapagkat panahon ni Apostle Paul, lahat na matay na eh. Am I right? Lahat na matay na. Pero dito, sa ating panahon, hindi tayo lahat na mamatay pagdating ng Panginoong Heso Kristo. Ha? Yan ang pinapanalangin ko. Na ako ay buhay sa rapture. Nasasalubungin ko ang Panginoon na ako'y buhay sa rapture. Yan ang aking panalangin sa Panginoon. Sa araw-araw. But, ikaw man ay mamatay, ikaw man ay buhay pa sa pagdating ng ating Panginoon, tayong lahat kanyang babaguhin. We shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed. Ang mga patay ay bubuhayin muli on the basis of what? Of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. Bubuhayin muli and this time, kapag sila ay binuhay na muli, ang kanyang katawan ay incorruptible na. Ibig sabihin, yun na yung tinatawag natin na glorified bodies. Ha? Kaya nga sa rapture, sa rapture, kapag binuhay ng Panginoon yung mga patay, mag-aalisan niyan doon sa kanilang mga libingan, sasama yung kanilang mga katawan sa kanilang kaluluwa. And the Bible says that all of those bodies, even the, uh, all of those bodies will be changed into a glorified form. Ang sabi ng Bible, itong glorified body na ito ay katulad ng katawan ng ating Panginoong Yes Cristo in the book of 1 John chapter 3. You see? We shall all be changed. And then, uh, pansin nyo rito ang ibig sabihin ng change na yan. In verse number 53. For this corruptible must put on incorruption and this mortal must put on immortality. Folks, listen. We are looking forward to that. Kaya alam nyo, alam natin na ano ako ay always tell the Lord, Lord, I'm just like David, I would tell God all of my, of my, uh, you know, uh, problems, all of my heartaches in life. And I would tell the Lord almost every day, Lord, I'm getting tired of this pandemic. My body cannot take it anymore. I'm affected, Lord, when my people, you know, are infected by this coronavirus. I cannot help it. Kahit na, for example, like I do not want to be stressed up and I don't want to worry. In fact, uh, perhaps worry is not it, but stress is it, folks. Listen, we don't like what's happening. I'm not happy about the coronavirus, are you? No, we're not. Magkikita nyo rito, sa pandemic na ito, how corrupt the body is. Am I right? How corrupt the body is. I don't care who you are. You might be the more spiritual man, but your body is still corrupt. Huh? Your body will still get sick. Your body will still, uh, you know, 
uh, oh, go down the drain. Oh, see. I hope that the Lord will raise up uh, Brother Johnny Galera despite of him having dialysis. I hope the Lord will, will still raise him up, you know, and that he will still be alive until the rapture takes place. But we don't know. We don't know what the future holds. But we know who holds the future, isn't it? You see, I mean, while we are here on earth, our body will still be corrupt. But the Bible says the time will come when Jesus Christ comes back to take us home to glory. That this mortal, that this corruptible will put on incorruption and this mortal will put on immortality. So here is in verse 54, according to Schofield Bible, the believer's ultimate victory over death is a motive for faithful service. Ha? Ito. Okay. Yung ultimate victory natin mula sa kamatayan ay isang napakalaking motibo upang tayo ay maging tapat sa ating paglingkos sa ating Panginoon. So when this corruptible shall it put on incorruption and this mortal shall it put on immortality then it shall be brought to pass the saying that is written death is swallowed up in victory. Death is swallowed up in victory. And then Apostle Paul says, O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. For the wages of sin is death. And you know what makes sin grave? What makes sin so serious? The law says it. Kaya nakalagay dito, the strength of sin is the law. We know how great our sin is because the law says you have sinned against God. You're going to die. You'll be punished. You are condemned, you see. But you know what? Apostle Paul said in verse 57, but thanks be to God who gave it us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Our victory over sin, our victory over death is because of the Lord Jesus Christ, his death, his burial, and his resurrection. Pagka minsan, ang hirap din namang tanggapin, ano? Most especially kung tayo nakakaranas ng ganitong kasakitan. Kung nakakaranas tayo ng ganitong klaseng karamdaman. Kung nakakaranas tayo ng ganitong uh, uh, trouble sa buong mundo. Pero alam nyo, kaya nga, alam nyo, ang sabi ng Biblia, we take it by faith, di ba? We take it by faith. Itong si Apostle Paul, sinasabi niya ito, not because he felt it, not because he thought about it, but because he believed it. You see? By faith. Sinabi niya, thanks be to God who gave it us the victory to our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, now that we have the gospel, now that one day we are going to be changed, and be given an incorruptible body. Now that the Bible says that our victory is from the Lord Jesus Christ. And so I say, therefore, therefore, as you can see what God is doing to us, as you can see uh, uh, what the word of God says to us, as you can see the victory we have in Christ, as you can see, the power of the gospel in our salvation. As you can see, that our lives in Christ is very much secure. And on sabi sa person say, therefore, kaya nga, kaya nga, nalaman mo lahat yan. Nalaman mo ang gospel, nalaman mo resurrection ng Panginoong Esa Kristo. 
Nalaman mo na hindi ka miserable tao. Nalaman mo na sa buhay na ito, hindi lang ito pag-asa natin. Nalaman mo na sa ating Panginoong Yesu Kristo, meron tapong pa. Kaya nga, sa pagkakaalam mong yan, sabi niya, my beloved brethren, be what? Be steadfast. Be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. Manindigan tayo. Ha? Manindigan tayo. Huwag tayo yung parang parang uh, uh, papel na nililipad ng hangin. Manindigan ka. Maging unmovable ka. Maging always abounding ka. Always excited in serving God. Ha? Always excited. Kahit na sa pandemic na ito, kahit na kakalungkot ang buhay, malimit. Kahit na kinakabahan tayo na baka isang araw tayo naman ang makasakit. O kinakabahan tayo sapagkat mayroon tayo mga kamag-anak na mahal natin na magkakasakit. Yet, despite of all of those troubles, despite of all of those loneliness, despite of all of those things that bother us, the Bible says, let us be abounding in the work of the Lord. Sa langit, wala na po yung sakripisyo. Dito lang yun eh. Ha? Kaya nga sinabi ni Apostle Paul that I may know him and the fellowship of his suffering. Kapag nakilala mo ang Panginoon sa kanyang mga sufferings, nakilala mo ang Panginoon sa kanyang mga troubles, you will also say what the Apostle Paul said. I would like to know what the fellowship of sufferings mean. Because in heaven, There is no more fellowship of his suffering. Wala na. Wala na yan eh. Dito lang yan sa lupa eh. You know? So ano man ang kalagayan mo sa buhay, pinagpala ka man ng gusto o hindi ka pinagpala masyado, pero lahat tayo pinagpapala ng Diyos sabagat binibigay sa atin lahat ng pangangailangan natin. Oo. Hindi tayo pinabayaan ng ating Panginoon eh. The Lord has been all good to us, isn't it? Ha? Huh? Why? For as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Kung hindi vain ang ating kaligtasan, kung hindi vain ang ating buhay dito because of Christ's resurrection, kung hindi vain ang ating pagilingkot sa Panginoon because of the victory we have in Christ Jesus, kahit gaano kaliit ang ating ginagawa para kay Kristo. That is not in vain. Ang sinasabi niya, Apostle Paul dito, magpatuloy lamang tayo. Kaya ang team, ang team natin ay faithful and true. Maging tapat tayo, maging totoo tayo, maging faithful lamang tayo. Magpatuloy lamang tayo. You know, the word faithful, the word faithful also means continuing. Hindi ka lang faithful ngayon, hindi faithful ka bukas. Faithful ka araw-araw hanggang pagating ng Panginoon, you will be found faithful. See? Why? Because your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Let us be true to Him. Let us labor for God sincerely and honestly. Let us realize that we are not laboring alone. But the Lord Jesus is laboring through us. The Lord Jesus is working through us. The Spirit of God is working through us. The Lord Jesus Christ is also fighting our battles. The Lord Jesus Christ understands what we're going through. The Lord Jesus Christ knows. The Lord, that's the reason why I said in the book of Hebrews, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Why? Because we know what we're going through. 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 It's enough promise for me to go on, isn't it? You know what we're going through. Apostle Paul, thanks be to God who gave us the victory to our Lord Jesus Christ. This is enough. Enough na sa akin to para maging steadfast ako, para maging unmovable ako, 
para maging excited ako sa kanyang gawain. You know, we might not be able to see each other personally anymore. Maaari hindi na ako makapunta ng Kuwait. Maaari hindi na ako makapunta sa Saudi Arabia. Maaari hindi na ako makapunta dyan sa UAE, sa Qatar. Yet, that should not stop us. That should never stop us from being steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. And my only promise to you is this, that while God is giving me the strength, while God is still keeping me alive, I will always be there every day ministering to you. I'll always be there every day faithful in my ministry and faithful in the calling that God gave me. Ever we are, saan man tayo naroon, I will always be there faithfully serving my God. I'll always be there excited to preach the word of God to my own people. You see, I'll always be there because I want my people to listen to me. I want my people to learn from me what the Lord has given me, what the knowledge that the Lord gave me. I want to share it to everyone. Kaya meron tayong discipleship program. Meron tayong discovery class. Meron tayong mitosis. Meron tayong uh, new disciples class. All of those things. Huh? You know, sabi ni Apostle Paul, I have not, uh, you know, uh, hindered Uh, to preach to you the whole counsel of God. Pinayag ko sa inyo the whole counsel of God. Wala akong tinago. Wala akong tinago. Pinayag ko sa inyo lahat ng bagay na kinakailangan malaman niyo upang tayo maging strong spiritually. Kinakailangan natin yung spiritual strength ngayon sa ating panahon. And you know what? Only the Word of God can give us that spiritual strength. Alam niyo, nakakaawa ngayon ha, mas nakakaawa ngayon ang mga taong walang pagkakilala kay Kristo. Do you realize that? They get infected. They get hospitalized. Oo. Saan ang encouragement sa nila? Saan ang comfort nila? Saan yung spiritual comfort? Wala silang ganun eh. Huwag mong isipin kawawa ka. Why? Because you have the comfort of the Holy Spirit. Huwag mong sabihin kawawa ka in this pandemic. Why? Because the Lord promised He will never leave you nor forsake you. Or mo sabihin kawawa ka in this pandemic. Why? Because the Bible says we have the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. And because of that, because of that, ha? dapat tayong matawa, dapat tayong maging excited, dapat tayong maging active, dapat tayong maging steadfast, dapat tayong manindigan sa gawain ng ating Panginoon. Sabi nga ng isang awitin, only one life will soon be passed. Only what's done for Christ will last. Lahat ng ginawa natin, lahat ng ginampanan natin, lahat ng nagastos natin, lahat ng savings natin, lahat ng labor natin, lahat ng success natin, ha? ang may iwan lang dyan ay yung mga bagay na ating bigay sa ating Panginoon. Only one life will soon be passed. Only what's done for Christ will last. Huwag kayo, nag-iipon kayo ng lahat ng ginagawa nyo. Ha? Sa end ng buhay mo, sa lahat ng ginawa mo, Gano'ng kalaki ang may iwan para kay Kristo? Gano'ng karami man nanatili sapagkat yung mga bagay na yan ibinigay mo sa ating Panginoon? Malaki ba? Nandiyan ang awit eh. See? I hope we realize that. I hope nakita natin itong mga bagay na ito. Ha? At sana Itong verse na ito ang nabibigay sa atin ng hamon, nagbibigay sa atin ng kalag- kagalakan, magpatuloy tayo sa ating pagilingkod, sa ating Panginoon. Therefore, 
My beloved brethren, be steadfast and movable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as you know, that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. May you tayo lahat. Let's bow our heads and close our eyes. And let us search our hearts tonight. Sa lahat ng ginagawa ko, wala ako ako'y naligtas. Kasi walang kwenta na yung buhay mo na hindi ka paligtas. Eh. Tapo na yan. Eh. Pero mula na ikaw'y naligtas hanggang ngayon. Ano sa mga gawain natin, sa mga binigay natin, sa lahat ng ating ginawa, itatapo ng Panginoon sapagkat walang kwenta. Ang may iwan lamang yung ating mga ginawa para kay Kristo. Through Him. The things that we have dedicated to God, the things that we have given to Him. Search our hearts tonight. Let's look at our lives. Ano natin maigi ang buhay natin? 